Wet weather pounding the Bay Area right now, creating dangerous conditions out on the roads. This is a live picture from Highway 17 in the Santa Cruz Mountains. In San Francisco, this was the scene downtown this afternoon. A sea of umbrellas, hoodies up, people braving the rain, just trying to stay dry. I'm out here getting almost soaked, but I love it. We need this rain. No drought. No more coming. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Bring it on. I'm ready, Mother Nature. Bring it to me. The rain also causing some flooding at the Civic Center BART station. At one point, trains were not stopping. The platform was absolutely drenched. BART blamed the flooding on Muni. Crews have since fixed the issue and have restored service. All right, let's get over to our chief meteorologist, Paul Diano, who's tracking a stronger, if you can believe that, wave of rain that is still on the way in. Paul? That says a lot because what we've already received today has been rather strong. And we're looking at right now the radar getting more active. All that stuff off to the west which is knocking on the door of San Mateo County and Marin County. Uh, that's even heavier rainfall than we had earlier today, and even stronger wind, which is kind of hard to fathom considering within the past two hours, Big Rock Ridge, 1,600 feet in elevation in uh, right around Petaluma, 93 mile per hour wind gust, 55 miles per hour at SFO, and 56 miles per hour at the East Bay Hills. It is raining in Yonville, St. Helena, Sonoma, and Napa. It is still raining intensely over the Santa Cruz Mountains, especially along Highway 17. And as we go into time lapse mode over the past three hours, you can see one wave of rain moving out. That's now snow over the Sierra, and some heavy rain and some thunderstorms heading toward the Bay Area with that second wave, which will move in this evening. Flash flood warnings there are two, both in Sonoma County. Petaluma, Pengrove, Grayton, and Sebastopol right now under a flash flood warning until 545. An urban flood advisory, translation, roadways are flooded. That's for the entire North Bay and Central Bay until 845 tonight, the entire evening commute. And if you're not under one of those two warnings or advisories, you're under a flash flood watch through the night tonight as that heavy rain is going to move through. And a high wind warning is in effect. We already talked about that 93 mile per hour wind gust. Been here several years. Haven't seen anything like that in the Bay Area. There's plenty in the 70s, a few in the low 80s, but 93 miles per hour is the strongest wind we've had in several years. We could see more of that this evening. Even our cities could see 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts with the hills and coast up to 60 miles per hour. So it has been wet and windy. It will get wetter. It will get windier. As as the evening progresses, that second line of rainfall is poised to move through within a few minutes. We'll talk specific rainfall totals and when all of this moves out coming up in a few minutes. All right, Paul, we'll see you then. Strong winds bringing down trees all over the place. Here's some new video. We're just getting in from Sonoma County. A tree snapped a power pole on Neely Road in Guerneville, completely blocking the residents there. A tree also crushed an SUV on Old Monte Rio Road. A storm also pulled down some high voltage lines on Martinelli Road in Forestville, leaving one family stuck in their home. Meanwhile, in San Jose, a large oak tree fell on top of a pool house that happened on Bayless Place. The homeowner there says that she was in the kitchen when a strong gust of wind brought down that old tree with a boom. Crews used a chainsaw to try to cut pieces of it apart. Uh, there was no major damage to the house itself. And another tree came crashing down in Saratoga right into a transformer. This tree fell in front of a home in Crestbrook Drive. It toppled power lines and knocked out power for more than 130 people. Now in the past hour, a new mess in the Santa Cruz Mountains. A mudslide came down on Highway 17 at the Glenwood Cutoff. It closed both southbound lanes briefly. And the day-long downpour too much for the soaked hillside. The slide blocked both lanes, causing a major backup just before 4 p.m. Trans was able to get on scene quickly and clear those lanes. At last check, only one lane remains closed. KPEX 5's Devin Feely is live in the Santa Cruz Mountains where they're feeling the effects of this storm. Devin? Yeah, here in the mountains, we have the trifecta at the moment. We've got rain, thankfully a little light at the moment. We also have a cold, gusting wind, and we also have fog as nightfall has fallen here in the mountains. Let me go ahead and show you these cars that are inching along are inching along in that backup created by all of the problems this rain has caused, including that mudslide a few miles down the road. A soaking rain created widespread problems throughout the Santa Cruz Mountains this afternoon, closing several roads and inconveniencing drivers. It caused soggy and saturated soil to come cascading down on Glenwood Road in Scotts Valley. And for a time, work crews were spread so thin, this tractor operator was forced to wait idly for a dump truck to arrive before he could even begin to clear the soupy mess of dirt and debris from the road. 
I was just trying to follow the curve of the road and uh, my car had other ideas. Drivers on the main roads like Highway 17 didn't fare much better, snared by slick and slippery roadways. The back of my car went this way and I tried to correct it and ended up in the wall. The crash flattened both tires on the driver's side of Griffin Vavoda's truck and the seriousness of what had happened had just begun to sink in as the CHP helped his car limp onto the shoulder. That was fun. It was like a cool like 20 seconds of a roller coaster and then I hit the wall and realized I could have died and it stopped being fun. But it is an important reminder to slow down. The drivers face with unrelenting rain and approaching darkness in the Santa Cruz Mountains. There is no exact timeline for when the road behind me will be completely reopened. Coming up tonight at 6 o'clock, we'll take a look at what is being what was done today in order to warn some of the homeless encampments along our street, our, our creeks and streams ahead of this storm. That's coming up tonight at 6 o'clock. In the Santa Cruz Mountains, Devin Feely, KPIX 5. Now some East Bay residents uh, dealing with those dangerous winds and spin outs on slippery roadways as well. We've learned uh, damage from one falling tree could have been a whole lot worse. KPIX 5 John Ramos has that story. The assignment desk told me to come up to Grizzly Peak to see what that looks like today because, well, that's what assignment desks do to reporters on days like this. In Contra Costa County, there was storm damage even before the rain started to fall. A massive oak tree crashed down onto a residential street in Lafayette about 9 o'clock this morning and blocked Withers Avenue near busy Pleasant Hill Road. The property owner says it sounded like thunder and shook her whole house. She says it's lucky the tree didn't fall earlier because there are usually cars lined up on the street taking kids to school. It was good that the school traffic had ended and there was nobody on the road at the time. So if this had happened an hour earlier? Yeah, an hour earlier, it would have been a lot sadder in the story. The tree may already have a sad story. The creek it sat in is known as Murderer's Creek because in the mid-1800s, a survey crew found a man hanging from an oak tree in this very area. Neighbors have always wondered if today's fallen oak could have been that tree. As we're cutting the tree, we're noticing water coming out uh, of the tree, and so that tells us that you know the roots gave out, uh, the water saturated the tree, and it just couldn't handle it anymore. By 2 o'clock on Highway 24, windshield wipers were already having trouble keeping up. Tow trucks were busy picking up disabled cars, and luckily, no one was injured in this rollover accident on Camino Diablo alongside the highway. Up on Grizzly Peak, there is usually a panoramic view of Berkeley, Emeryville, and San Francisco in the distance, but not today. Unprotected from the hills, the wind was howling and rain formed what looked like waves on the street. Zach Lewis pulled over to watch from his wind-blown pickup, and then a miracle of sorts. For a brief moment, the rain stopped and the Bay Area was visible again. Pretty good view from here? Uh, yeah, it can be. I notice you're inside though, and you haven't gotten out yet. Nope, staying dry, <laughs> staying dry. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, no problem. And with that, the wind and rain began again. The moral to this story is stay inside tonight if you can, which is where I'm going in just a few minutes. On Grizzly Peak Road, John Ramos, KPIX 5. Good idea. Well, close call to tell you about now at a homeless encampment in Emeryville. A eucalyptus tree fell in the middle of the night, narrowly missing the people who were there. No one was injured.